Whistler in Canada, the venue for the season opener in the BMW IBSF Men and Women's Skeleton World Cups. After a great race for the men this morning, this afternoon's action focuses on our female sliders. Hello everybody, welcome back to the fastest ice on the planet for the second deciding heat of the season opener for the World Cup. 16 sleds getting ready to go at the top of the track. I'm Martin Haven, delighted to have with me Andrew Blaser from Team USA who raced on this ice this morning. And Andrew, got a fascinating race in prospect with a, an entertaining top three after the first heat. Absolutely, right here we're seeing actually highlights from Jane's run. She's sitting in that third place position, but she did open with a start record. Uh, and then we've got Hannah Niza sitting in second place who is the Olympic gold medalist. Uh, at 21 years old when she won an Olympic gold. She's now 22. Um, she's got some, some really cool things with her when she's sliding. She's a little bit further back on her sled than I think we see a lot of athletes, and you'll see that coming up here in the second one. And then, of course, the 18-year-old Hallie Clark, who made the switch from competing for Team Canada to competing for Team USA, and she is throwing down some burners right now. She's very comfortable here. This is her home track. She stays composed on her sled, 
even in situations that may feel sticky for another slider, she gets back on her line and she trusts herself here with all of her experience here. It's going to be hard to put this into context. I don't know of, and I certainly haven't had the time to research whether anybody has ever won a World Cup race on their debut. I think highly unlikely. So for Halikar to even be leading here, and by that margin, quarter of a second ahead of the Olympic champion, by the way, silver medalist here in the last World Cup race, Jane Channel is in third. Tina Herman, four-time world champion. She won the last race here in 2019. She's only in 10th place, 8,500s back. I mean, whatever else happens in Hallie Clark's day, she's not had a bad one so far. There's her teammate, Kelly Curtis, your teammate, Kelly Curtis. What's going on between the runs? You're not allowed to change the runner, but you can adjust the settings a little. So we have what's called the rock. Uh, that's going to be that bow that's in our runners. So our runners don't sit completely flat on the ice. We do get to put some pressure on those and make a little bit of a bow shape to them. So we have some limited contact on the ice with our actual runners. Um, we are looking for any damage that may have happened in there. Um, but most of that's going to be with, with that rock and trying to, to play with the conditions. So if we're in a slightly more traction day or if we're in a little less traction day, we'll kind of play with how much contact we want on the ice with our actual runner. You didn't slide yesterday. Last training day was two days always before the race. So the ice could be 100% different. So the first heat tells you what the ice is like whether you guess right or not, you then have to go and make those adjustments. Our second heat then, we go last to fast. Julia Erlacher from Austria will be first off. She is 16th of our 16 sleds. And then as the changing room empties around her, Hallie Clark last out. Now this is her first ever World Cup race. She's come up from the junior divisions. So she has perhaps a little less of a support system in place than she might do. Uh, in a year or two's time. Second deciding heat, first race of the Women's Skeleton World Cup at Whistler. Martin Haven and Andrew Blas are watching as Austria's rookie, Julia Erika, blasts off from the start, 22 years of age, the first World Cup start this weekend. Julia is a really good start. Uh, consistently, she, she brings a lot of speed off the top of the track. It's going to be interesting watching this second heat to see where things shake up. We've got a really tight pack through that middle. Uh, even in those top six positions are all fairly close. 489 getaway, just 100 slower than her first heat. She looks a lot more relaxed on this run than she did in the first run. She is using some of her toes, but she's getting the sled pointed straight by using those. Gets under that pressure on curve 11, so she doesn't spike and get a lot of height on the back end of it. It kind of uh, avoids that hit. Sometimes there's a, a little hit that can happen on curve, curve 11, and she can hold that weight really well. And she raced here a couple of weeks ago in the North America's Cup. A number of the athletes did just to get themselves dialed into this track, because this is not one that you take on lightly. 54.80. Well, that is uh, six tech 63 hundreds faster and 4300s fast of her first heat. She had a really high entrance into that last corner, corner 16, which we call Thunderbird, uh, but she had a much better exit of it. So in that first heat, she had a, a foot on one wall and a helmet on the other, and she managed that one much better. Takes a little clip on that wall there. That's going to push her really late into curve 13. So this is the exit of that curve. She's trying to get underneath that pressure a little bit more and point that sled straight. You can see any any angle coming off of the front of that sled is going to be time that she's cutting off of her run. Yeah, the straighter the runners go, the less drag there is, the more uh, it flows freely. But of course, you've got to get around the turns as well. So, so the highest pressure corner in the world right there, you can see the <laughs> that front side of it. She took it a little later than she was anticipating, and she got really high on that corner, so then she's trying to get it moving forward as best as she can. Well, a debut for Julia Erlacher. She has her first time in the leader's box as well. Does she stay another minute? Here's Kendall Wessenberg of the USA. 16 best start, 5.06. Not got huge speed off the start, Kendall. She needs to make up for that with drive down. And, and Kendall's going to come back with a, a vengeance on this run. I know she probably wasn't happy with that first run, but she's looking really relaxed here. Uh, that first run back on a World Cup is always going to be a little shaky. Uh, you've got cameras around and everything like that, but her lines right here look really, really solid. 
It's just a little high on the exit of six, gets it back on before the entrance of seven, which is great. Lead came down from 1400s to 900s, now back out to 1800s of a second. And as the uh, sun sets, air conditions dropping, track conditions, track temperature dropping as well. Better speed than Erlacher. We're going to see her turn that sled under that pressure on the front side of 16. Uh, again, a lot of athletes kind of struggling with that, where we're getting pushed off of 15. It's a little bit later of an entrance, so our height is a little later, and it's washing us off the corner, and then we're getting really high through 16. She does a really good job managing that and turning that sled. 18 hundredths of a second quicker than her first heat. Hey, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Just had my Thanksgiving dinner as uh, turkey soup at well, lunchtime. Be that exit of six, you can see just a little bit hung up with that runner. Uh, that's a pretty sticky spot for most of us. And then this is going to be the exit of 12 before 13. So that 50-50 corner named because 50% of the bobsleds could get through it. <laughs> and we've just adopted it too. It's a pretty hit or miss yeah. on that guy. Hey everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Kendall Wessenberg in the leader's box. Two down, 14 sleds to go. Next up for France, Agathe Bessar. She comes from the resort of La Plan. Plan, former Olympic track as well. That was for the Albeville Games. And on her helmet, it's not Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. When she pulls it further down, you'll see that it is one of the Alpine mascots of France, the Marmot, uh, a small beaver-like creature. Furry rodent. I don't think that's a reflection on, on anything other than it is just one of the La Plana mascots. 498, pretty decent start, same as her first getaway. Very consistent start for her. Clips that right wall coming out of curve two, so she just didn't get that height all the way through curve two a little bit later on entrance going into it to do that. Uses her toe going into curve six. She's just trying to get that sled turned so it's parallel with that corner. We don't want a lot of height coming off the exits in most of these corners uh, unless we're trying to generate a lot of cross into the next one. Got a huge amount of experience here in Whistler. As a result, head is up a little bit, but it looked pretty decent. We are trying to keep our head low. I, I broke a visor this week uh, just by getting my head too high. Your face will pop off the ice when you do that. You get under pressure really fast. It grabs you and throws you down. 54-65. So that's slower than her first heat, but quicker than Kendall Wessenberg. And the net result is she stays in front by 38 hundredths of a second. It's a pretty good run for Regat. Again, she has a lot of experience training on that Laplante track, where you're in those high-pressure corners and, and what we would call a double-pressure corner. So you're getting picked up twice in some of those corners. Uh, Laplante has a, a series of those, and she's got a lot of runs there on a very long track. So staying composed for a shorter time frame is, is really impressive. And it's a good driver's track as well. Haven't been there for too many years, actually. She got a little hung up there, so she pushed that pressure through on curve 11, and she just had a lot of height and comes down kind of on that bunk. Tries to get her head back down and point straight coming into the next corner. Out of 50-50. Up on the wall there, you see a little black mark uh, in the side shot. That is uh, Stephen Holcomb logo. He's the man that gave 50-50 its name in the training the first week this track was open. And Agat Bessar moves into our leader's box now. Agat was in a dead heat with Jackie Narricott of Australia, our Olympic silver medalist from February. So absolutely nothing between them in the first heat. They started 4.98 each. Their downtimes were 54.57 each. So nothing in the start, nothing at the end of the run either. No, and I, I don't think I've seen too many ties that work out that way. I've seen occasional ones in a full downtime, but never at start and downtime. Jackie gives away a hundredth at the start, then has a little hit out of one into two. Loop through two a little cleanly, more cleanly into three. And that's the advantage there. She gave away less of that start speed early on. Oh, she does clip the roof there. So what Ooh. happened, she got pushed away. She was a little late into curve six. And she pushed that height trying to get it all the way through the corner. And she just climbed to the roof as quickly as she could. Slithering around on her sled. Looks like she's got not quite enough control. This is always a balance between too much control, which slows you down, and not enough, which slows you down. 
It does, and what I do want to point out is that she looked in, and that part of the track is a little sticky for us. Curve six is one of those mental corners that we want to make sure that we're dialed in for. And when it doesn't look like she had the greatest entrance to it, she got back on line and she got her feet back together and she was gaining speed down most of that run. Uh, especially that transition from her curve 11, 12 into 13 was really smooth. Well, she was behind at the start, then ahead, then behind, then ahead, and ended up keeping a lead by seven hundredths of a second over Agat Bessar. Not quite the start of the quad, though. I was about to say, not quite the start of the season that she would have wanted, but there you go. And this is where she clips that roof. You can see that that's going to turn her sled yeah. down, and now she has almost driven it down into a, a hole. But here you see her come off. And she's trying to get those toes out to the side, trying to pull that sled to that right side because she can see herself going later and later into curve nine. <laughs> that breath of relief when Whistler yeah. is done. <clears throat> yeah. Everybody loves to come here, but it is, it is mixed messages, isn't it? Because, yeah, this is a tough track. It's, it asks a lot of everybody. It does. One of the things with this track is that it it emotionally exhausts you. So multiple runs here just make you tired. Kelly Curtis for the USA, Matt Antoine laying down the sled for this Air Force performance athlete. Now just moved to a new home in Italy. So she will be heading home to Europe after the four race North American swing, or four week North American swing. She had a pretty good exit of curve one there, and then you can see her just fighting a little bit with that slide and that straightaway from two into curve three. Gets over early to curve six, and then she tries to turn that slide so she's not getting a lot of height through the middle portion of that corner. 2200s over the leader, Agat Bess, uh, Jackie Narakot at the start, still has 2200s. Now that grows to 34, pulling away. Part of this is just getting comfortable, getting back into a competitive season. A lot of us didn't have very long pre-seasons. Kelly's doing a really good job of, uh, of staying composed with this track and early in the season for not a lot of runs yet this year. Second best speed at the bottom and a 54-2-9 slide. That is the fastest of the second heat so far and a tenth of a second quicker than her previous best. So she moves into the leader's box. You can see that tape on the front of her helmet getting kind of peeled back from, from generally Thunderbird, sometimes even Curve 11, where you get a lot of that pressure on your sled very quickly. And when you're pulling four or five Gs, the only thing you can do is put your face down. One here in North America's Cup races back in 2017. But her previous race to this was here again in NAC in 2018. So you always think, you know, home athlete, yeah, you're bound to have a million runs, you know, down all the North American tracks. Not always the case. Well, we've got all three Olympic medalists from Beijing in the field. Kelly Curtis, head of silver medalist Jackie Narakot at the moment with the first five sleds down. Great Britain's Laura Dees was the bronze medalist in the Winter Games in Pyeongchang 2018. She's had a bit of an up and down time since then. And it's quite a long summer deciding whether or not she was coming back to the ice. From her presence here, you can tell what her decision was. 11th place, tied to the 100 with Kelly Curtis. We had two exact ties. This is the second of them, so 100th up from the start. I'm wondering if the start group hasn't slowed down a little. We're seeing some of these athletes pushing just a smidge slower on that, whether that's a, a frost thing in the groove or whether that's the athlete and the time between runs. The air drops and the refrigeration is on. Could be we're just getting a little bit of uh, dew point frosting there. One of the things with the British athletes that you, you're seeing if you watch a lot of this is how well they stay engaged with their form. Their feet are together, their pointing forward. That was a little wild. Yeah. Through curve 11, you can hear her face dragging. Second heat as a commentator, you've already got the, the knack of the curse. 1200's back. Don't forget she was tied to the 100th with Kelly Curtis. Three tenths away. Brand new sled this season for Laura Dees. Uh, talked about this in the first heat. Andrew, you know, it's... 
it's not even like getting into a different car and turning on the wipers instead of the turn signals. It's much, much more all enveloping than that. The sled is an extension of you, more even than the shoe. It's got to fit you. It's got to react exactly the way you expect it to. And she doesn't have that relationship yet with it. No, and, and a lot of us are very regimented in our processes at the top of a track especially and getting on a new piece of equipment is one thing that will always make you second guess when you get really comfortable with it and you know exactly how that sled's going to react or feel you can see that some of this might just be her being a little uncomfortable because she doesn't know what this new piece of equipment wants to do when you're doing 86 87 88 miles an hour head first it's got to do what you want it to you can't be thinking about whether or not you're in the right place so Kelly Curtis leads with 10 to go and in 10th place is the woman who won the last top tier race here the world championships in 2019 this is Tina Herman four-time world champion multiple world cup medalist 29 medals from 64 starts before today I don't think today is going to be medal number 30 I don't, I don't know if we can count Tina out. I think she's one of those athletes that you can never count out. Uh, we'll know a lot more by, by Curve 6 and this guy here, but she has the ability to drive her back, herself back into really high positions. She's already slipping just a little bit behind, uses a toe there at the exit of Curve 4, but it does get her over to Curve 5 very early and limits that height so she's not getting crossed off late into Curve 6, which is really good to see. Back into the green, she loses out to most of the other athletes at the start. More ice means more Herman speed though. 2100s now ahead of Kelly Curtis. She is looking wild, but it's working for her. 4200s up and best speed of all goes into curve 16 really late. You can see how 15 pushes are off and that nose angle is going up to the roof there at the beginning of curve 16, but she gets it turned, she points it forward and she manages to gain some extra time there through that last quarter. 88 hundreds faster than her first heat, nearly nine tenths of a second and she is absolutely livid. It was not a classic Tina Herman run. She is normally surgically precise, but then she hasn't raced here in four seasons. When I had talked to some of the German athletes earlier this week, they were commenting on how most of their preseason wasn't super great weather through, uh, they got one good day of it's, three it's weeks. It's been rainy and miserable in Europe. Yeah, and, and everything's been dead slow. And the German bobsled has pointed exactly to that as why they all got caught out on this track in their first training runs. You can see her use that toe just at the exit of that first pressure. And then she does again a little on the exit here, trying to keep it off of this left wall. That ice is kind of eaten up by some bobsleds and some skeletons uh, at this point, and your your body almost folds into the jagged ice. Yeah, I think training in Europe, it's been like doing all your training in a, in a little four-cylinder car, and then for race <laughs> race week, they give you a big, hairy ass V8. And uh, yeah, the speed is, is a whole different thing. But it is Tina Herman that leads as we get to Mimi Raniva. This morning, she was the track start record holder. Does she take it back? 476, no, 496. Wow. It's not the start that we were expecting to see from Mimi, but I want to see how this plays out through her run. When Mimi stays very engaged, she threw down some 53 threes in training earlier this week. Uh, you can see her feet are just glued together. She's getting great entrances into these corners, and she is telling her sled exactly where she wants it to go. Well, before she came to World Cup, I knew her name because she was on start record sheets all over the place from NAC and ICC races. And she needs to be, as everybody does, I guess, in exactly the right spot to really produce the goods. I actually think Tina Herman, although she's such a different character, is very much the same, just 500s in it. Tina Herman could lead this. She was a little untidy. Oh no, Mimi does not quite get it back at the bottom. I thought maybe she might. 53-84 run for Mimi. So her 1500s over Tina Herman evaporated there and she drops 700s back. It's difficult to tell where those uh, mistakes, if you want to call them that, would happen through that run, because that was actually a really smooth run, especially through until about the exit of Curve 7 was the first time that I could identify anything that I would be even thinking about as a mistake. 
It's a little high here. You can see her use that toe, and then her shoulders pop up when that sled kind of reconnects with the ice. Yeah. And it's those flops, isn't it? It doesn't look dramatic, but if you think you're dropping a body and a sled onto the ice, of course it takes energy out of it. When you get that energy, and then you go into a corner, and you feel it just pull you into the corner itself. <laughs> Always a ray of sunshine. Onwards and upwards. Now then, we are starting to get into serious territory. Top eight after the first run for Suzanne Kreyer. Her third World Cup start. Her two previous races were in Innsbruck. She is the Intercontinental Cup champion from last season. So that's the second tier of sliding below the World Cup and the reigning junior world champion. She's got a lot of experience in a short time frame. Uh, a lot of the German sliders get to start sliding a little younger than anyone from from the U.S., from uh, some of the other programs around uh, where we just don't have the exposure to the sport. A lot of the German sliders come in a little younger than we do, so even in early 20s, she's got a lot of runs down. And one of the advantages she has is she's already a fast starter. 486 getaway, fifth fastest starter in the field in the first heat. And that really helps. All the coaches say, give me a fast starter, I'll turn them into a slider. It's hard to turn a slider into a fast starter. It is, and I was always of the opinion that you should focus on the driving portion. Uh, the start, you can you can learn a little easier. She's got a couple of really good lines, and then a couple that don't look like she's quite comfortable where she is. I, I think that's probably right. Lacking in experience on this track to a degree. 4,300s up to a tenth back, and it'll be 2,500s very nearly at the line. 54.05. But Suzanne Crea... Once we get into slightly more familiar territory, and I'm particularly thinking about getting back to Europe and we start in Winterberg, then two weeks in Altenburg, at that stage that should really play into her hands a little bit more. Of course, she needs to perform here though, and in the German selection races in the Christmas New Year break, to make sure she's still part of the World Cup tour after Christmas. It's a, a dog-eat-dog -dog life being a German athlete. You see her take just a little bit of that tap on the uptake there that pushes her a little later and then her sled wants to climb because it's the pressure is coming onto her faster. She throws that toe off on the right hand side there trying to get it off the corner quickly. Uh, just as you watch that happen when you're on a sled and you're, you're climbing higher and higher and you know there's going to be a flop coming out of it. She's trying to prevent that from happening. All right, well, the race in Whistler is done, and she is behind her teammate Tina Herman and Mimi Reneva. We have seven sleds to go. Herman leads. Next up, Nicole Silveira of Brazil. Ninth fastest start, seventh at the bottom. And with the Formula One world champion Ayrton Senna's colors on her helmet, really, really channeling lots of Brazilian speed. 492, another good getaway, little faster than her first. And Nicole is a, a very strong starter. She is also a very experienced slider on this track. She has a lot of runs here. She threw down some really fast times through training, and she just looks very comfortable here. You never see Nicole come down looking frazzled. Even there, she was a little high on the front end of six. I think she even put the roof there on seven, but she still looks calm when you look at her feet when she's sliding. First match at the World Championships here in 2019, when she was competing then for Brazil, having made her first ever World Cup start as a Brazilian breakwoman in bobsled. And she just slipped into the red, so again, I, I don't think we can ever count out Tina to get herself back into a medal position. She's just picked off three, even with Nicole having a pretty solid run there with a 54.01. Well, Tina looking pretty disappointed. There's Joe Cicchini uh, from uh, Calgary. Nicole, although she's from Brazil, spent all her career racing in North America before she came to the World Cup. And still works in Calgary. I believe she's actually a, an RN when yeah. she's in our, our she off-season. So yeah. any of those big hits, she can diagnose what's going on with you. And, and she was working in emergency rooms all the way through COVID as well as training and sliding. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's an awful lot going on in, in athletes' lives that don't involve a few seconds of speed on the ice. You see her in that <laughs> surprise and, and awe on the face of the, the current leader. 
She's sending out uh, best wishes to Kim Marmons as well. Uh, her teammate, different nations, but they team up together. And uh, she, Kim, recovering from uh, an accident here in the uh, pre-season training. So we hope to see her back on ice later this season. Six legs to go. Brogan Crowley next up for Great Britain. Uh, you can see on the wall there, Matt West and Marcus Wyatt. Gold and bronze medalists. Marcus took the gold, Matt the bronze in this morning's men's race. Our teammate and uh, Lawrence Bostock up there as well. Cheering her on. Let's see what Brogan pr can produce. 474, new start record. There we go. So maybe my comment about the groove uh, getting sticky was way too early. She handled curve two there great. I, I think she will see some solid acceleration coming in here into curve four. Just a little bit of a toe on the exit, but she does set herself up into curve six really nicely. Marcus Wyatt and Matt West have both tied for a new start record in the second heat. Marcus said it felt good, it didn't feel special, but Brogan's got some good speed on board. She is easing away from Tina Herman. She is building her early advantage. Still six tenths up, best speed of all. She needs to keep it clean at the bottom though. This is looking like a really good run. You can see she's bleeding just a little bit of time. She had a, a seven tenths of a second advantage, but she does get out of curve 16 with a beautiful exit. And that is a huge difference. You've got, there's a, you know, a big smile and applause from Martin Stukors. This is his first day officially as a World Cup coach for Team GB. And look at what that felt to her. I don't think she even knows the start time yet. Now she does. There's that second fist pump. You get the second fist pump. She came here as a new slider. She doesn't have any reps here before this season. And to come out with a run like that in the second heat, um, it's sometimes easy to have a one good heat in a race, but to lay down two really solid, consistent runs and to be building speed on the field that she's in. This is a very deep field. It's yeah. not a very many names on the list, but the names on the list are all very talented, and yeah. to be able to pull away from them like that is really impressive. Well, all three of the Olympic podium are in the field, and she's sixth, and she's ahead of two of them. So that's a good start to Brogan Crowley's day. Five to go, she's the leader, and she was two tenths out of the medals after the first heat, but that second run, that was a good-looking run. Five sleds to go. Anna Fernstedt in the World Championships here in 2019 finished in fourth place. She's been a silver medalist in the last World Cup race on this track as well. Can Anna move up from fifth after the first heat into the medals? Martin Haven and Andrew Blaser watching the action with you. It's a pretty good getaway for Anna. She looks really, really good coming out of curve one. Does get a little pushed over onto that right wall coming out of two, but she is pointed straight and she is relaxed on her sled. She learned to slide in Berchtesgaden, Bavaria. She started her career and then slid in World Cup for Germany before going to her second home in the Czech Republic and sliding for them. Really good exit through that straightaway between seven and nine. We do call that curve eight. No, it doesn't look like a curve, but it is there. And she gets that pointed straight, and she looks like she is in the red here. Third best speed, fourth best speed, so she's going to drop behind Brogan Crowley, but ahead of former teammate Tina Hummer. She Got almost worked close. that back in. That was a very, very close. close finish. Well, she found something through curve 16 with that line and getting that to continue accelerating and building that speed at the bottom. Uh, Brogan, if this track had been just slightly longer, I think Anna might have gotten her with the difference in their start times. Yeah, well she was 300 ahead of Brogan Crowley and comes down 900s back. So she lost 1200s in that run, but it got very close at the line. See her sled a little sideways coming off of that corner, but again, she recovers back into pushing that sled forward and making sure that she is just calm and enjoying this run. Big smile from her down there at the bottom. It's great to see. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, next up, the yellow jersey, our World Cup champion for last year, Kimberly Boss. What a season she had. And Kimberly in the last 15 World Cup starts. So all last year and uh, the last five of the previous season, only four times off the podium. She's basically just had the medal hoover out. 
taking them all away. 11 of her 12 World Cup medals have come since she claimed silver at Sigulda in November 2020. And Kim has great skeleton starts uh, just around the world. She manages most start ranks pretty well. She's very good at taking in information and making adjustments through a training week. Olympic bronze medalist, she and silver medalist Jackie Narakot have been friends for life and have teamed up officially to work together with their coaching unit. She's the Yoska Leconte. You can see her feet get a little bit spread apart on that, but she gets them back together through her seven. She's using that toe off on, on this side to try and pull herself off of corners when she thinks she's climbing too high at the exit. Well, she had a slender advantage over our current leader, Brogan Crowley, of just seven hundredths of a second, and she's lost three tenths and more, four tenths and more. Ooh, and again, it's quite wild. The speed is high. She goes a little bit late into that again, that curve 15, just catching some people off guard, myself included. Uh, it is shaped a little different than most corners that we're used to, and you're going so fast that the curve seems short, but it is a deceptively long corner. And if you get that height late, it's going to push you over into Thunderbird later than you want to go. And you're watching her do a lot of work to try and turn that sled under pressure. Yeah. Pretty wild ride for Kimberly Boss, last year's World Cup champion and Olympic medalist. Use that toe again. You're seeing that off to the side of the sled because she's really trying to do some work to get it off of where she thinks she's too high at the exit. Made her World Cup debut here in December 2016's race. A broken Crowley in the leader's box, three to go. See, I was about to say the same thing myself. Absolutely encompassed it 100%. Three to go then. Who will take our medals in the season opener here? Joe Cicchini in the background, just a couple of words for Jane Channel. Jane has got good history on this track. She lives just a couple of hours away down the sea to sky in North Vancouver. She has had uh, a second place here in the World Cup in 2017. Former silver medalist. She's in the bronze medal position after the first of our two heats. When she set that start record in the first heat and then Brogan just took it back. So we're gonna see if Jane uh, brings the heat on the second run. 477, that's quick as well. That's what the old start record, inside the old start record. But, uh, it's all about getting down the ice quickly. You don't get anything in the end for having the fastest start. 800's up on Brogan Crowley, but the gap's coming down. She did catch just a little bit of that right while coming out of two, but for someone who has as many runs as she does, I don't think that we're going to see too much of that affect the downtime. She was only 1,200's up from the first. He's in this a little wild. It's a pretty big hit going into curve nine. It gets you onto the corner really fast, and then it gets you to height, and it spits you out really fast. Can she make it work for her down the Gold Rush Trail? She needs to find the speed. It's not there. It's definitely not there. This is going to see her drop out of the medals. Brogan Crowley is in the medals for the first time in her career. In her first World Cup medal holding position, and Jane Channel drops down to tie for sixth with Nicole Silvera and two still to come. For as fast as this track is, it's still very nuanced in those mistakes compounding as they go. So if one corner gets away from you, you're not going to see that for two or three more, but you generally will continue to make those mistakes for two or three corners before you can get it back online. Probably not too happy with that, just for how experienced she is here. See her climb a little high there, and then she gets pushed back over really late. Takes that tap right before curve nine, which we're trying to avoid, but then still that curve falls away and she ends up getting onto that too soon. And giving away that speed early on in the run, it's really hard to get it back later. So disappointment for Jane Channel, two to go. Hannah Neiser, the Olympic champion, next up, just 22 years old. Hannah, never had a World Cup medal of any colour in her career. Is this where that changes? This is only her 15th World Cup start, 
5.04, that's a pretty solid getaway, but it leaves her a tenth behind Brogan Crowley, who set a new start record at the beginning of this second run. And Hannah's just very precise in where she positions a sled. And as you're watching, she's not throwing toes like we've seen some sliders do. She does there at the beginning of six, which is a pretty common one. But she stays very engaged with her equipment, and she stays very engaged with the run through the entire length of the track. Now, if you take the graphic off, I'd say this is Tina Herman, because this is what Herman's runs look like. Tina Herman did not have the control we normally see. Best speed of all, Hannah Nizer coming up, 700s back. Is she going to overhaul Brogan Crowley? She does, but only the fifth best speed. She needs a great exit here. She's clean enough. She is clean enough. 53-6-9 run, so she takes the lead with one to go. Brogan Crowley will be at least a bronze medalist, Hannah Nizer at least a silver. For Hannah, starting in those fives and being able to work back in as much uh, distance as Brogan had placed on her on the start, she found some afterburners on that run, going through those bottom probably four corners where she was just continuing to accelerate the sled all the way through. And that's what I mean about being Tina Herman. She just looked under control. Tina Herman looked out of control almost. See just a little bit of toe action there, trying to keep it off of that left wall. Didn't seem to affect her run too much as she opened up a little bit of a gap on that. Took the little hit there and that actually straightened her up into corner nine, uh, into ten rather. So there's your Olympic champion. And guaranteed a World Cup medal today. First ever. Now, what color? Snipers, that's the logo on the shoe, that's the logo on the suit, and that is the logo on the jacket of Joe Cicchini, he set up the Snipers Skeleton Club in Calgary a few years ago to bring on young sliders. And Holly Clark is one of those. Now, she's sliding for her first race as an American at the World Cup, her debut, 18 years old. She led off the first heat, another good start, 4.80. We're going to see what Hallie can do with that start. That's a very competitive start. She has all of the makings of being an incredible skeleton athlete. She is young. She has a lot of experience already, whether or not that's at the World Cup level, but she can drive a sled. 5,800s up. She had half a second over Olympic champion Hannah Nizer from the first heat. Runner-up in the Intercontinental Cup last year, the second tier of sliding. Hallie Clark down to 3,600s up, but still leading. 800s and 12th best speed. It's not going to be a fairy book ending. She's not going to win on her debut. Will she drop out of the medals? She's currently third. Needs a good run to the line. Is she in the medals? She is in the medals in silver medal, tied with Brogan Crowley. But Hannah Neiser, the Olympic champion, wins her first ever World Cup race. Wow, Hayley Clark, the first half of that run, I thought she had it. <laughs> she just had a couple of uh, issues with a few corners getting her hung up up early, but to come down with a second place overall finish on your home track in your World Cup debut, that's impressive. Uh, just to be as confident and comfortable and happy as she is uh, when she gets to slide here. Well, she beat everybody except the Olympic champion on this track. And she looks like she's just had the most fun there is to have. Uh, wow. Holly Clark, welcome to the World Cup. That is a fantastic debut to lead your first ever heat. And then to come away with a silver medal. And Hannah Nizer, well, we talked about it in the first heat. Mariami Amanka was bugged for a while right you've won an olympic gold medal when are you going to win a world cup race it took her a, a couple of races and eliza has answered that question immediately uh today is the day the first world cup race after her olympic gold medal and she takes the win so Hannah Nizer, and it wasn't an easy win either came from 2600s back andrew so you know she relied on somebody else also wavering and this track nothing is guaranteed you can have a great first run you can have a great second run uh, it's about getting those consistently and together in both runs is who we're going to see walk away with the medals which is what happened here today and on other tracks you know winterberg or, or koenigsee or somewhere if you're 2600s in front forget about it nobody's catching you 
here, though, because particularly the European athletes don't know it quite so well. A lot can go wrong. A lot can change. And the speeds here mean that you're punished a lot for the mistakes you, you make. But Hannah Neiser is the winner. The Olympic champion starts the season top of the pile. Hayley Clark and Brogan Crowley tied to the hundredth of a second. And Anna Fernstedt, fourth place here, as she was in the last race here, the 2019 World Championships. Kimberly Boss in fifth, ahead of world champion that day, Tina Herman, with Mimi Reneva and Jane Channel for Canada in the top eight. Nicole Silvera, Suzanne Crea rounding out the top ten. And then Kelly Curtis ahead of Laura Dees and Jackie Narricott with their Olympic medals. A distant memory when you've had another race after the Games, everything starts again. And Julia Erlacher, our other rookie in the field, finishing in 16th place. There are easier tracks, probably, to make your debut than Whistler. Can't be too many harder. We go to one of those in a few weeks in Lake Placid, and we go to another one of those next week in Park City, Utah, from the 2010 Winter Olympic venue to Andrew's hometown and the 2002, the first ever Skeleton Olympic venue. Join us then as we rejoin for race two of the Women's Skeleton World Cup. Until then, from Andrew Glasser, Martin Haven and the RBSF TV crew, it is goodbye from Whistler.